Welcome to Eco Ask Why. This is a special New Year's edition. I'm very excited to get this out to you all. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the episode, and I think we'll have a little bit of fun here. I'm going to do a little something different today. And we're in a new year. We, we uh, 2023 is here. It's hard to even say those words out loud, right? This is unbelievable how fast time goes by. And this is our third year um, doing the podcast. It's been an incredible ride. And for this episode, I wanted to share something with you all moving through this year that I think is going to help you. Okay. Specifically, I want you to consider where you work. And when you think about where you work, where you're physically doing that work, think about what can you do to make it a place of beauty? Now, I get it. You maybe say, well, Chris, we can buy a place of beauty. This is just work. But I'm saying, hold on with me. If you can do that, if you can, if you can put a focus on actually making it a place of beauty, this is going to do something to your mindset. And it's going to do something to your work that is going to be unbelievable. Okay. Because think about it. When is the last time that your office or your cubicle or your, maybe even your toolbox, right? Maybe when's the last time you actually took attention and, and, focused in on what it looked like, okay? Because I'm going to tell you right now, in the in the world that we live in, busyness can clutter our desk and our workspace. And when that happens, productivity is going to suffer. It's going to suffer. And this is, and this is I'm going to share personal stories throughout this episode uh, around how this has impacted me. Uh, and you may have to take some drastic efforts to really make that significant change. So, so we're going to dig into some of that. First of all, shout out to the eco swag. How about this, this nice Carhartt jacket? This just came in the mail today. I was like, you know what? I'm going to wear this while I'm recording uh, during this episode. So pretty excited about that. And for our YouTube people who are watching on YouTube, you're going to see this awesome studio that I'm in right now. This, this is pretty new to eco ask why and this kind of goes in line with, the theme of what we're going to be talking about today. So I want to talk to you about this studio, uh, how it worked, you know, what it's led to, and the changes I had to make to ultimately be able to serve you all as the listeners and the, the people who, who check out our, our podcast at the highest level. So to just starting, the best place to start any story is where? The beginning, right? So it started at the, the origin. We, we got it going. We made the pitch. We got the approval to start the podcast. We ordered the basic materials we needed to get going. Uh, we made the sound boards. I made all that stuff in my in my driveway, in my garage, and just did a lot of work just pre- prepping uh, to do the show because we were going to originally do the show uh, recording in, in our lab in Raleigh, North Carolina, and recorded one or two episodes. Uh, funny fact, the very first episode we ever recorded, we forgot to hit the record button. So we actually had to do that episode twice. But uh, we had a lot of fun with that, though, still, and, and learned. Uh, so we were able to get a couple episodes done. And then as soon as we got, I think, one or two episodes in, uh, we that was around March of 2020. And I think we all know what happened in March of 2020, right? So when the pandemic hit, what we had to do was basically I loaded up everything. At that time, I had a pickup truck and I literally, literally loaded up the sound boards, the panels, the whole deal in the truck, brought it to my, my home office and turned my home office into a home studio. OK, so that was that was quite an adventure in itself, just turning that into a home studio to. to but I'll tell you what, the show must go on. Right. And And, and from March 2020. Uh, we never missed a beat. We were able to record with some incredible guests, and you guys have has li- have listened to so many of these of these episodes. We're connecting with people all over, all over the country, downloaded all over the world. Uh, it's been really incredible, uh, and that immediately we had to shift right and we had to learn. We, we were learning along the way, so uh, the producer is actually one of my best friends in the world, Adam Sheets. He, he would come over to the house for every one of those recordings and he worked the soundboard. Uh, we have dogs barking in the background and all this crazy stuff happening, right? And when the Amazon guy come over, we had to just stop the podcast and, and then keep going once the dogs chilled out. But we had all those lessons learned, right? And, and that was our that, that home studio. And that was pretty cool. And then we said, you know what? We need to start doing video and, and adding that to the podcast. So that 
and that added a whole new level of complexity. So we ordered a, uh, a green screen. So in my studio, I had a green screen that was up and, and that was really cool. It, it helped us do uh, video at a pretty high level and have a really cool backgrounds and things like that. But at the same time, man, you have to have the right lighting. You have to have everything that needs to be right when you have a green screen, because if you don't have the green screen uh, installed correctly or lit or, or lit up correctly, uh, it just doesn't work well. So that just added more equipment. So next thing you know, I'm working in an environment, okay, that I literally could walk in. There was a path that I could walk into my desk, to my chair. My desk was a corner desk, so it kind of wrapped around. Had sound panels around, sound boards, microphones, uh, books, all these things, right, that we're doing to, to make the podcast happen and to do the writing and all the research that I do. And they say, you know, you, you, you couldn't move. You couldn't breathe. You, you, I was having trouble breathing in here. It was just, it was like the walls were just closing in. And it was affecting, it was affecting me mentally, just being in this, the, the studio. And, you know, you know, you know, so we said, you know what? Um, something's got to change. So we actually went to see, was able to go see a speaker. Uh, you guys may have heard of him. Jordan Peterson came to the area and we were in heat. And the topic he spoke on that night was, uh, one of his rules, and it's around make one rule in your make one room in your house as beautiful as possible. And he and there's a lot of you know psychology and things behind that on, on why you should do that, and that just really resonated with me that night leaving. And and I was like, you know what, he he obviously he he's brilliant, but I think that one room for us for my family is my the home studio because I spent so much time in here working. Uh, you know, when you work from home, many of you do, you know what it's like. And if you're just working from home, you're working at the kitchen table and you've been doing that for a couple of years now, that is stressful. And, I, and so um, we decided, you know what, we're going to go all in and we're going to make, make this, this studio beautiful. So we did this year, right after Thanksgiving, the uh, Black Friday, I started cleaning out the office. So the studio, the green screen came down. The books went out probably, man, 300 books or more were in here, went out. The desk came down. It literally took the studio down to, to the four walls. And we had a plan. There's always a plan, right? So I met with, again, bringing up Adam and his, his lovely wife, Abby, uh, helps with the, a lot of the design work. So we kind of laid out a, an idea of of how we wanted to come forward. What would be a, be a really good way to represent Eco SY and to show and to, to, to make an environment where you, know, you could think and, and ultimately serve the listeners the best way possible. And then actually give me a place to where I could actually think and not worry about books falling on top of me, right? In the middle of the day. So we, we laid out a plan, uh, sketched out, Adam sketched out, on some potential layouts of the room and we had all that together. And then what do we do? We set a budget and we set a budget and we understood, okay, here's our budget. Here are our big items that we needed to do. Uh, and here are the, the, the items that we would be nice to have. So we had the must to have for the, for the studio and the nice to have. Right. So that's something to think about if you're thinking about your, your office and where you're working at. And we laid out a budget. And then we start, we went to work and they did, Abby, again, did a ton of work and research and, you know, thinking this goes to the power of teams, right, as well, and being, you know, being transparent. And for one thing, for me, I found it was very uh, freeing to just give up that control of, hey, I need help with this area. I'm not really good at designing these things. You are. Can, can, can you help me? And. They were absolutely, they were like, absolutely, let's, let's do that. And understanding at that point, though, I have to back off. Because once I've asked for help and I've given them authority, right, I need to back off and just trust. And so I remember saying many, many times, I trust you guys. I trust you. Whatever, whatever you say, whatever you think, I trust. And so that led to where we're at now. So, again, the whole studio is empty. Well, paint went up on the walls that day. Uh, the debt, we found a nice desk. The desk came, a new desk came back in. It was new to us. We, again, marketplace and used, used furniture. There's, there's definitely a market out there for that stuff because we were doing things on a budget. And then, so we were able to get the desk in and, and then we had a, basically a, a design day. And it was pretty cool 
uh, how we did that. A lot of the, the pieces Adam made directly uh, himself, uh, and they wanted to to set up the studio without me seeing it. So uh, he he was able to do that with his wife, and they had it just this. When I walked in, is one of those HDTV moments, right? From those house design projects, where just it, I was blown away. And I will tell you this: ever since that moment, and being able to work in this studio now, there's a lot more clarity. Okay, there's a lot more ability to focus and really hone in and think and create what needs to be created without the chaos. Because if you're working, if your work area is complete chaos, you need to be aware of this. It's probably affecting your work. Okay. And you know what? You may not be able to go in and completely remodel your office. I, I get that. That may not be in the cars. And I'm not saying that you have to do that. But you can make small incremental improvements. I guarantee you that will make a difference. Okay. So it may just be a new filing system that you need to put in place. It could be as simple as, you know what? I want to see the top of my desk again. I know there is a desk underneath all this paper somewhere. I'm committed to just seeing the top of that desk. Maybe you want to try something called inbox zero. Okay. That, that's a, that's a tactic that's out there. There's books on that. There's references on that to where basically you get your inbox. It's a, it's a whole inbox filing system. Uh, maybe you want to try something like that or, you know, Maybe you want to start incorporating a new habit for your lunchtime routine. Okay, maybe you want to start doing some exercise, walking and running, whatever it makes sense. But ultimately, what you're trying to do is make that work environment, whatever that is, the most positive pace, place possible where you can create the best work for your company or what you're doing. And you can't do that if you're living in this environment full of chaos and, again, papers falling everywhere and emails thing and all these notifications, you got you have to throw a flag on the field and you need to protect yourself. Okay. So again, as you move forward, think about your area. Think about what are the different things you can do. And you don't have to go as crazy dramatic as I did, but maybe you want to. You know, I will tell you this, you know, there's something about uh to be said just for some little paint on the walls. You know, and and reading Jordan's book one thing that he mentioned is he tried to do this at his um, university in Toronto. And when he brought that to them of what he was going to do, they shut it down. So he had to go back to a plan B. And the plan B was was uh, basically just painting the walls and doing some things like you know, some more minor cosmetic changes. But the point of his thing was, you know what, focus on that beauty. There's something about, I mean, you're spending 8, 10, 12 hours a day in your wherever you are working. Clean that up. And I remember for me, even when I was in outside sales and business development, you know, my, my vehicle was clean. It was always clean. I was pretty big on that, particularly the outside. But even the inside, I would try to always maintain a clean vehicle because you know what? That, that there, there's something to be said about clarity and focus when you're working in a clean, a clean environment. So maybe you're outside sales and you're thinking, you know what? This doesn't apply to me. Yes, it does. This does apply to you. You can take and so maybe you need to shift up how you go about your vehicle maintenance or your vehicle. I, I used to have cube, uh, these boxes uh, that were in the back of my truck and that they had all my PPE, all my test equipment, all the different things, you know, brochures, literature, all the things that you would need to, to effectively do your job. But it was in a organized manner. And when things are in an organized manner and you can get to them, you can access them, you know where stuff is and there's a place for everything and everything in its place and all these things, right? <laughs> Cleanliness is next to godliness. All the things that you think about, it does matter. Because I can promise you 2023 is going to be a crazy year. It is going to be crazy. The people who win are going to be the ones that can, can take that time to understand what's coming at them and react the fastest. Now, if you have to... To, to work through a mountain of, of, of junk just to be able to respond, you're going to have struggle. So this is something right now. This is the time of year. Many people are making resolutions. I get all that. And if, you, if you're a resolution person, fine. Roll with it. I'm more of a, you know, let's, let's do the right habits. Let's just do them. No matter if we're going to start that in June or January, it doesn't matter. But your work environment, this is a great time of year to think about that and understand, you know what? I spent a lot of time here 
for my sanity and even more for the quality of work that I'm producing, I need to put some attention at some intentionality behind this. And if you do that, again, I know there are a lot of constraints. Not everybody can do this to this degree, but control what you can't control. And then try it and see how it makes you feel, how it impacts your mindset. I'll tell you, the environment around you impacts your mindset. It does. Just like you're a product of the five people you hang out with the most. We've all heard that saying, right? That is a lot of truth in that. Your environment does impact your mindset. And for me, this studio, again, it's just been a place of just been a, a wonderful change to be able to come in here, sit down, open up, dig in, and let's, and let's go. You know, let's go. I don't have to worry about uh, where did I put that stuff and all these things, you know, literally hundreds of books laying around me. It was, it was pretty bad, y'all. But again, it took some time. I had to have a plan, I had to put together a winning team, put together a budget, and then execute it. And we stuck to the plan. So again, don't make this so super complicated. And if you need to start small, start small. Literally, just clean your desk, the top of your desk. Make that step one. Then maybe move to your file cabinets. Then maybe move to bookshelves, right? Then maybe move to the plants that need to be cleaned that have never been cleaned in the last, you know, five years, whatever, right? There's all these different areas within your work environment. But my main thing I want you to think about is just have some pride in it. Have some pride in it. Just like I'm wearing this 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 new coat from Eco. I have a lot of pride. Anytime I put the Eco swag on, I walk out and I wear an Eco shirt pretty much every day. And, and when, I, when I wear it, there's pride in that. You know, and you should be proud of where you work. You should be proud of the job and of the company. You should want to represent them well. And that's what this is all about, representing them well. I mean, just look behind me. This this uh, this beautiful canvas for Eco asks why. It represents them well, right? And it took some time and some intentionality to make that happen. And I guarantee you, if you try this, you'll probably see uh, – your coworkers around you jumping on board, wanting to make some changes to, to their work environment. You never know. You may be starting something that, that really catches on in your company. Uh, and also, it's going to give you a chance to be a little creative and bring some of your own personal uh, flavor and touches uh, to your design. So have some fun with it. So there's, there's I told you this was going to be a different episode. It's the new year. Just wanted something fun for you all. But really consider where you work and try to make it is beautiful as possible. I really hope that you do. I mean, that is your challenge. And if you do that and you want to send us uh, maybe a before and after, love to see that. Connect with us in our show notes. You can connect with me directly. Love to see those, what that before and after looks like. And, and also just share what your mindset is. Okay, now that you've cleaned it up, how do you feel? That's most important. How do you feel? Because remember, again, eco is all about people and ideas over products. So we can really care about the people. And I think this is this is an idea that you can you can implement right now, however small or how large it is, to make a big impact. Now we're excited for 2023. I tell you what, it is we have a lot of new resources coming. It's a, been a lot of, of, of change. This is a season of change for eco, and we're all focused on serving at the highest level possible. I can't thank you enough for listening to the show. We have a lot of support for listeners out there, and we have a lot of things in the plans for 2023 of, of different ways that we want to serve you all on Eco Ask Why, in particular, answering your questions more directly. Uh, so we'll be doing a lot of, of experimentation and trying ways to, to ultimately serve you with the information that you need the most. Because as a distributor, we we were representing so many different products and people and and, and ideas and uh, themes. So we want to narrow that stuff down to focus in on what's important to you. So you'll be seeing some of that stuff coming in, in the future. Very excited again! Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to us. If you will give us a rating, write a review. That makes a huge difference. So just it could be as small as one sentence. That just that makes a big difference. So you can go right into your the podcast app and do that there. Um, I would ask you to consider sharing this out. You know, most podcasts grow by di- when people directly share via text. The stats prove that. So if you find, if you think this, this few tips I gave you to here today on your work environment would help someone else, maybe, maybe it would help a coworker. You nudge them along with uh, passing this, t- this podcast over to them so they can listen to it. Like maybe they want to implement some of these ideas 
into their uh, work environment as well. So that's a big way you could help us. And between the rating and review and sharing the episode, that's the biggest area for sure. Uh, other than that, keep coming back next week. We'll have some, a, another episode out. We'll be ready to serve you there. And definitely want to know the topics, the questions that you have. So check out the show notes here. There's a link to me directly if you want to just send me a direct message uh, so far as what what questions do you have that you'd like to see Eco Ask Why address? You know, and again, we will put it out there. We can make it, uh, you know, from you specifically. We can make it anonymous, however you want it need it to be made. But the main thing that we're focused on is serving you with the information that you need at the bottom, at the end of the day. That's what it's all about. So again, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to us. We we, we just uh, nothing but blessings for 2023. Excited for this year. Looking forward to serving you all. Um, and again, remember, you got you know what's coming. To keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.